my dad's jealous. Usually he's the favorite. I am not jealous. Oh, come on. She's drinking. She's drinking, Dad. She's drinking. <laughs> she wants more. All right. Now I'm jealous. I heard a rumor that you tried to duet with Morgan Freeman on this film shoot. I did. I tried to as much as I could. <laughs> I, I, he loves to sing, yeah. and he's got a great voice. I don't know how many people are aware of that. I mean, a singing voice, mm -hmm. a great speaking voice. But uh, I tried to kind of get in there any chance I could just to say, yeah, man, you know, me and Morgan, we, we kicked it around a little bit. You're jamming. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, of course, you couldn't get through the movie without a little bit of a music a tribe of your own on that. Did you write that in or was that written in for you? It was written in. Um, when I read the original script, that whole part of me playing the saxophone didn't exist. And when Charlie Smith, who directed it and wrote it, said, what do you think about, about your character playing this, this kind of a melancholy song called Everything Happens to Me? I said, oh, that sounds cool. He said, well, on the saxophone. I said, that's not so cool because I don't really play saxophone. <laughs> no, I don't do that. So I got, got a saxophone and started practicing and it, you know, it was within the realm of acting and I, I, I really like doing it. Gotcha. Um, as far as uh, uh, career advice goes, there's a rumor that you're not supposed to work with animals and children. Right. Uh, and there's both of that in, in here. How was that experience and who is more difficult to work with, animals and children or Morgan Freeman? Morgan Freeman. He is the biggest diva in the world, showing up late, cursing everybody out, drunk, <laughs> stoned. <laughs> I mean seriously, the guy's a mess. He's a train wreck, you know. Paging Dr. Drew. Oh, Morgan Freeman, he has no idea that he has a problem either. He wouldn't believe what he said about you. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Exactly. We hate each other. <laughs> as far as uh, the, the family aspect of the rest of the film, so much of it is about adoptive family and your real family and kind of like coming together, uh, you know, banding over a single, you know, issue. Who would be in your family after this, after this film? Those children, yeah. for sure. I'd adopt them tomorrow. We love them. I say we, I mean my wife and my three girls. We love them. We love Nathan. We love Cozy. I mean they are, they're the sweetest, most wonderful kids. I'd, I'd, I'd take them in a minute if yeah. I could. Yeah, they seem very professional too, you, to think at that age, you know. Oh, they're I'm, poised. Yeah. They're very, very poised. But way beyond that, they're good people, man. I know that because I know their families and I know how hard their, their parents work to make sure that they go down the right path. And they have done a remarkable job. They, they should be very proud. Gotcha. And as far as your career is going, you've got a musical coming up on the uh, on Broadway, mm -hmm. from what I understand. And then you had this acting gig. And from uh, rumor has it, you also put out musical CDs. Sometimes. Uh, yes. Uh, karaoke uh, stuff. Karaoke. You show yeah. up for the karaoke fest. Yeah. Um, do you have plans to put out another album next year? Or, or? Um, I think, well, I have a strange music career in that sometimes I just release albums because I know that they're, they don't really need to be promoted, but I'm just kind of doing it for, for myself. And there's a trio record I have coming out. I wrote a children's musical called The Happy Elf, and this is all my trio interpreting music from that. And so that'll kind of come out and be out there for people, but it's not a a, a big record that I'm doing for Sony. It's for Marsalis Music. So okay. the next big record will probably be next year sometime. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And by big, I mean 10, 20,000 copies. <laughs>